I'll read the Indigenous Acknowledgement Statement. We would like to begin our meeting by recognizing the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples of Canada as traditional stewards of the land. The municipality is located within the boundary of Treaty 18, Region of 1818, which is the traditional land of the Anishinaabek, the Haudenosaunee, and Wendat, Wendat peoples. I'm um, looking for a um, mover and seconder to approve the agenda. Um, Sean and Pat. <laughs> um, any changes to the agenda? Okay, all in favor of the motion? Carried. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest or general nature thereof? Seeing none, we'll move on. We have some reports to receive. These are the um, AOBA primer, the action plan update for September, the CEO service update for September, and the BNPL charitable application update. Madam Mover and Seconder, please. And Joanne. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Previous minutes. Um, so this would be the minutes of August 17th to start with. Any changes, corrections to those? No. Nope. And then there's also the e minutes of August 29th. And the only thing I have for that is it seemed to me that there's an incorrect mover and seconder for the poll because it um, had people from last term. Oh, that was, that I think it was a cut and paste. Cut and paste, yes. And we're about to change the mover and seconder. I will take the first six questions. Joanne and Gary. Okay. Yes, I will take the first two people who responded to the poll. Okay. I think Maria, I think Maria, you were first, and I will look to see who was our second person. Okay. Thank you. Anything else about those minutes? If there's a slight little typo because it's in the SharePoint and I just go ahead and fix it, that stays live, right? Or uh, just let me know and I'll fix those because that's not the official records, what's in there. Okay. So the typos don't need to be approved. Thank you. And I have a mover and seconder to approve those two sets of minutes uh, as circulated. Um, Pat and Joanne. All in favor? That's Gary. Thank you very much. Um, business arising from the minutes. I think the only two items I noticed are actually on the agenda later anyway. So I think we're good unless there's something else. Okay. Saying nothing. Uh, no deputations. The one from the public is here. And there's no correspondence. So we don't need that motion about proceeding. So we're moving right into the heart of the agenda, which is great. Um, so the first item is the action plan update. Now, I think, um, Sabrina, you noted a couple of items for discussion. Uh, I forget where I saw that. Um, but before we come back to those, they are CH 1.1 and OE 4.2. I'll show it all. Um, are there any other questions on aspects of the action plan? And the two you had, Lori, were CH. CH one, one, the very first item there. And the other one is um, Organizational Excellent 4.2 topic. So it's the meetings with the um, council okay. pairs. Um, 
So I think I just want to comment myself on 1.1 1 .1 is I did um, share the um, discussion of the council discussion about a uh, public meeting, I guess, about the name change, change or not change mm -hmm. <laughs> um, depot um, station. And uh, I emailed it to about 20 of my friends and explained why the board was interested in the name station and uh, asked them to support it. I had um, eight responded, um, four wrote um, in support um, and one preferred depot. So that was sort of my, I wanted to do it both in terms of the actual discussion of the name, um, but also to ra raise awareness about, you know, that's why stuff mm -hmm. well, but also things going on in terms of the library and Brigley in particular. So that was my way <laughs> of beginning to address um, the whole concept of what C1.1 is. So, so, you know, raising awareness and information gathering on BMPL as a community hub among personal circles. The other thing I thought I would do. Um, use information from our report, which is coming up, um, to council to share with friends. So some of those things, some of the data, you know, and the things that we're presenting to council and the timing that is you know, up for discussion anyway, whether we try to do that before or after it goes to council. But the whole point is that we get more awareness out in the community about you know, the trends for libraries. We do, we do put a lot of stuff out there, but I think if, I send it to my friends and we're like, but really, because it's, oh, what's Lori sending me? Mm -hmm. I mean, they may decide they're not interested in it and they may go, oh, yeah, I know she's on the board. Oh, this is kind of interesting. I wonder what she did, how she spends her time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it gets, it gets attention. So that's that's my thinking on how I'm planning on approaching that. Good idea. So it's up to you guys how you want to address it, but those are those are my thoughts. That's a good idea. I think I, I mentioned before that I have a friend who lives at uh, Windfall. And so I think I'll contact her and find out who, you know, they, I think they have a Facebook group and just see, you know, if there are certain people there that kind of lead the conversations or if there's a way to, um, yeah, what the process would be in the future if we wanted to borrow their meeting space in the shed. It's called the shed. There's a, a gym and a yoga studio and a little place for a social event. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say about that. Um, and I know in terms of the oh, uh, 4.2, uh, we did talk about having more detail from the report uh, coming up before we start doing some of our meetings, but I don't know if anybody has uh, gone ahead and booked a meeting with their mm -hmm. counselor. I tried to, but she was on holidays and then said she'd get back to me and has me So I'll reach out again. I've reached out but had no response. Me too. So I should, try, I, I, I should actually check. Just I can assist in those if you need booking. Yeah. Okay. And I can break. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. okay, so we'll put that back on our Yeah. Okay. I think everything is back in session. It's, it's more of a reminder to really? resend. Yeah. Because after some copy art was changing that. Yeah. 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 And I can confess that I haven't reached out to the mayor again. We did have a meeting early on, but I haven't. Um, we start her again this fall. Probably won't now until November because I'm away for three weeks in October. Anything else on? Anything else on the action plan you wanted to talk about? Mm -hmm. so one about reaching out to members of the community. I had one identify and address at least three systemic challenges that limit community access. Is that what you're thinking? That doesn't look like it. No, on your face. it was more um, people who are homebound, or, mm -hmm. and it was for March. We tend to do that as 
has a winter program for the people who are regularly more active, but then aren't coming in in our winter months. Um, we don't have a true homebound program being delivered to their homes. It's that we assist them to work with people in their circle so that there's a, the liability of having somebody have access to your information is waived because they're asking for that assistance. Is it something that has been or would be considered now that there are fewer restrictions due to you know the, the pandemic being over that maybe, and I know classrooms are very busy, but um, maybe classrooms would adopt a grandparent and have, like when I when my kids were little, we had a lady that we delivered books to from the Midland Public Library. And my kids were part of that as kind of an example, mm -hmm. you know, to model for them getting to know them. They didn't have grandparents close by at the time. And we I'm sure the schools are going to start going through all of their pandemic procedures again because numbers are rising <laughs> quickly. Yes. Yeah. Um, but outside of that, we've found that the majority of the people who are in the community, they're not isolated in a way that if they're homebound, they're locked away. Um, most of them have family or friends, and we've just tried to work it out that on the time that they're coming, they just call ahead. They say who's coming. We work with them on that. Uh, some have more of a standard person that's going to be the person who's going to come and get it on a regular basis. Um, pretty much we're, we're, we're at an easy level of being able to use the music Museum as well for a closer pickup. So it's it's not quite your traditional homebound, but it's it's working at this point. And it's something that we monitor because we may very well end up with somebody who is in a very different situation in the future that we need to look at. I do have a question about the CH 1.2, which is the second one on our pages. Um, identify and address these three systemic challenges that limit community access to BNPL. It's got a September date, and I didn't see it in your report. I wondered if there's been any action on that. Um, we have been looking at that. Uh, one of the big things that we're looking at is our equity, diversity, and inclusion, and making sure that we are uh, very open to that piece. Uh, certainly, we've been in contact also with our uh, agricultural workers, which is one of the groups that we found barriers, especially now that we don't have the Sunday hours that used to be the day that they would most often come. Um, so we're not seeing as many of our agricultural workers and making sure that there's information going uh, in part because the uh, part of their program to be accepted into the country, the farms now have to have a stable Wi-Fi system. So uh, a so lot of, sit outside, a lot of the, the groups that would sit outside so that they could call home uh, and have those face-to-face -face conversations, they're not needing us to provide that particular service anymore. Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah. Even though it might be a drop-in service from our perspective, it's uh, better for them. Yeah. And that's something that changed during the, the heat of the lockdown with the pandemic that they made mm -hmm. sure that their, uh, the residents were going to be able to come in since they weren't out allowed to leave the farm during many parts of the lockdown that they would have what they needed. Well, good. So farms were put into that position. Hmm. Okay. Um, I did, sorry, the bot had a question. Um, first, to, under organizational excellence, mm -hmm. um, do we need to add a few points about the new CEO, about recruitment, their, I don't know if we add to the action plan at this point. Well, or this is already it's, done. It's done. <laughs> yeah. Or you know, onboarding, or I'm just I'm just wondering, are there actions that we need to acknowledge that need to be done within a certain period of time? Once she's on board. Well, certainly. I don't, um, I don't, know, if I don't, I don't know if it's necessary. Just have and if that's there. something that you wanted to add on, then you know that's just a motion that I guess that you could make to add to pieces. Um, what we do, I, I don't know how do people feel. I mean, are we, uh, we're on the cusp of making an announcement next week. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, uh, I haven't gotten back to you, but we're doing a transition meeting, um, the three of us. And then you'll be doing more of the sort of day-to-day -day onboarding with her. 
there are the things that we, I mean, other than that, I haven't identified anything. Yeah, I guess I was, I was honestly just wondering if there were yeah. specific things that were required in terms of the onboarding or things that need to be completed that we should just have on record that, that they're required and they've been completed. I, I we'll make sure all of the typical onboarding is done. So yeah. all of the legislative things you need to participate in, yeah. be certified in. Um, I'll be working with her directly for a one week transition. So the week of December 4th, we're going to be having several several pieces that we're doing. And I'm basing that in part on some of the pieces that she had mentioned in her interview with the board, areas that she'd like to become more comfortable in, uh, and then areas that she felt that she was excelling in. We'll just sort of breeze through those pieces and make sure that she is on target for what's needed here. Um, outside of that, um, I've made myself available also to, you know, have a standing meeting for a period of time or just, you know, how to reach me kind of questions. Yeah. Okay. I get it. So if there's nothing that needs to be making sure that we're completed by the end of the year, and that's, yeah. that's completely fine. And then when she gets on board, she can update this the thing she wants. But don't get me think, for the next year's action plan, mm -hmm. can you make a note that we include um, I'm not sure the word that's it's about the candidate taking Apple. Um, mm -hmm. I guess public leadership because mm -hmm. that will be an expense yes. to the board. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure we have that in there. Certainly, I, this this meeting is recorded and broadcast. Right? Yes. So mm -hmm. I think we should probably tread a little carefully since nothing's been released officially. We should tread more carefully on the side of confidentiality for this point, since all that is handed and closed. The references of her. And additional training should probably refrain from in an okay. open meeting like mm -hmm. this. Well, I'm just yeah. this is just my you know. Yeah. So Fair the person or the individual that's been selected that has not been announced yet. I'm just this is just this is the training yeah. the council training coming okay. in. No. Just Thanks. because no, it's good just to air on the side of coffee because it is still confidential. Yeah. Until the day that it's not confidential. Okay. It's just. So right on that, that just, just yes. Yeah. So on that, uh, her staff have been notified. Yeah. Our staff have been notified internally. Um, obviously, the board knows. The CAO also has just for information. Uh, and as of tomorrow, the posting should be going out or it's being ordered. Mm -hmm. So it'll be within like a 24-hour period. Um, council will be notified tomorrow, as well as the senior management team as an internal, um, just to let them know that we're waiting for their board to put the posting out, uh, and I expect by Monday, if not the weekend, everything will be fully <laughs> open and understood. And, uh, just, point, just at that yeah. point, I think it's, <laughs> you know, okay. as I said, like, yep. cat in the bag, it's, you know, that's, that's what I've always been, you know, people have asked me, and I said that an individual has been selected, and they look very promising, either a big deal, because that's the job. Yeah. So, okay. just right away out. Uh, I have another question, and it's about uh, it's OE2.11 standards there to bring commitment to environmental stewardship. And I'm not sure what that means is actions we need to be taking. Um, you can just sort of help. Certainly. So, all equipment that we purchase, we make sure that it is whether it's Energy Star or any of the other pieces that we're doing. Um, when we're looking at our uh, garden programs that people are doing, we're making sure that we're not dumping, you know, chemicals on there, you know, using Roundup to clean the, mm -hmm. the edges as opposed to just using a weed whacker, which will <laughs> clean them out naturally. Um, recycling programs, also the programs that we do with uh, children, we make sure that there's always a bit of a green component where we can, where it naturally fits in that we're doing those pieces. Um, certainly as a board, when, again, any major pieces that are being purchased, we're always making sure that we're going as green as possible as we can. Maintenance is on the town for those extra pieces, like if they were going to paint or put in a new rug, we would be asking for them to consider the uh, the lower, uh, what is it? Impact. It, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, we did those types of things with, um, with the museum when we were purchasing those, uh, in part 
making sure that the product is at a higher quality so that you're not having to put roofing into a landfill three times as opposed to one time. So those are the types of green commitment that we try to uh, maintain throughout all of our our, our purchasing yeah, and our programming. Quarterly action, it's more like There's not. It's that we're 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 trying to acknowledge what we're doing is an ongoing piece. Thank you. Anything else on the action plan? Okay, that puts us into the um, the main part of this agenda for today, which is all the um, policy review items uh, and also the AODA primer. Um, so I'd like to, I'm not sure if you want to handle that. any gaps mm -hmm. um, that in relationship to the primer that we have, uh, either in terms of the building standard or policy or whatever. Yeah and um, how we would address them. So I don't want to go through the whole document with this. You've read it. Really, the, the biggest thing that boards miss is that there is a component in the AODA that says, and anybody who uh, passes policy needs to have had AODA training. Um, so that's kind of the big piece is that you feel that there's not, as a board, you might not need to have the same level of understanding of what's happening, but if you're passing policy, there's a lens that the, uh, the provincial government and we as an organization are looking for you to have. So first round of policy, um, there are a number of areas of the AODA that we fall under. Uh, some of them do tend to surprise uh, mm -hmm. because it is one of those things that you say, well, what do we have to do with that? Um, so customer service standard is, st is the, the number one standard that every person needs to have, bless you. Um, there are numerous areas that you can you know, do their programs for free online. We use Access Forward because it's a good program and it is actually created by um, an accessibility standard body for Ontario. Um, that is really what our staff are needing to have right now to meeting that customer service standard um, is the plexiglass. It's very difficult for people to hear. Um, obviously, masks will start coming back for some people, and then we get back into the reading of lips. Uh, but we do see that aggravation of many of our community members who are just struggling to hear through the plexi and do come around. Uh, we've opted to keep it up because we know there are ebbs and flows, and although uh, we are not in the lockdown portion of the pandemic. It is still ongoing. Um, there are people in our community who have had it. There are people in our community who have died from it. Uh, and there are members of our community who have been impacted long term, whether it be long, uh, long uh, COVID or family members that they've they've lost and friends. So we are keeping our plexiglass going. Uh, we'll be coming back into some other pieces with that. But that, I think, is the biggest barrier that we need to know about uh, customer service and just have to be able to work our way to do the best that we can in that situation. Usually we sort of step to the left, <laughs> have the conversation, try to keep the distance between um, the integrated accessibility standards, transportation standard is something that we need to always keep in mind if we are doing transportation for programs. So when we were doing our arts walk, we made sure that we were looking at that because we're providing a bus. So therefore there must be those options. Uh, if we were to do a program, let's say we say the children all read a book and then we're going to take them to see the opening of the movie. We would not necessarily have to have an accessible bus, but we would have to say, uh, in our programming registration, if you require accessible transportation, please let us know by. And then if not, then we can go, we have time to be able to switch to the different bus. So if there's a two week deadline, then the accessible notice is not a two week deadline, but a week and a half deadline so that we have that option of switching. Um, 
in many cases, the accessible transportation has smaller options. So that means that we have to shrink those numbers. So we have to play with that to make sure that we have that time to make those changes. Uh, the employment standard is something that we obviously are working with. Um, your CE uh, manager for the organization, for you, the employer. Uh, but in our MOU, we do have that the council's HR department is at our, our call. So we certainly reach out whenever there's something that we maybe have a question about. We want to make sure that we're working directly with that. And then the information and communication standard, that's another, uh, another tough one. When it was written, it was written very much about print media. So if I'm going to have an agenda, if I'm going to have a flyer, if I'm going to have a newsletter that's printed and it hasn't really held up because so much of our stuff now is on uh, electronic means. So our uh, social media, nobody is meeting sort of an AODA because everybody is going for a look versus readability. Um, but when we look at our newsletters and things like that, we make sure that everything is able to be read. Uh, so the images might have a tagline inside of it, but the text is on its own so that they're read. Uh, screen reader available. Uh, so that I think has changed because the technology has made it more accessible, but areas that we really have all fallen has been social media and there hasn't been any legislation having to do with social media yet. So we may see that in the future. And then the built environment just uh, came in a few years back, and that was with the uh, the 2016 building code. So um, as we all started working on these, we knew the building code was coming, and now the new building code is looking at accessibility. So that's really the nutshell of what you need to know and how it impacts us. Um, from a staffing end, we make sure everybody is trained, licensed, doing all of the pieces, we work closely with the town on built environment. If something's being uh, adjusted in our building that we know accessibility will uh, need to be addressed because you're no longer grandfathered. So that's one of the issues in our bathrooms. Um, according to the uh, accessibility standard, the only thing that is actually addressed are your from furniture and things like that is the customer service desk. And as long as the customer service desk is not moved, changed, or altered, it's actually grandfathered in. Um, so we know that we need to make changes to our desk. Um, we are looking at that. And when the new CEO comes in, we'll let that person do some of those final decisions on there. But we have some uh, vendors that we've been working with local that might be able to assist on making a more accessible desk and a more functionally accessible desk for our staff as well. So I'm not sure if you have any questions, but I think that's a think pretty good overview. this before, but the website is compliant? Or yes. Are there, are, I think there were, there were levels of compliance. The, the website is, we have uh, software through the town. Sorry, I'm just trying to get to the end of that document. We have software with the town that actually is checking our site on a regular basis. So it's looking for some of the you know, more irritating things, bless you, like a broken link, uh, but it's also looking to see, are we meeting standards of um, the web? Yes. Okay, yeah. So sometimes that there's a cost involved in that sometimes. And when we moved from our previous website to the new website, that was a big piece is the previous website to actually hit all of those was very labor intensive. So now the new sites are really being designed in a way that they plug and play with all the background metadata so that they work for all the screen readers and searchability. And how would social media need to be more accessible? Because it's digital, so people can you know swipe on the phone and have it read to them and describe photos. How the, the reason is the image that you're putting up doesn't have metadata. So if I have a picture, it doesn't say what the picture is. If I have text in the picture, it's not screen reader. There's no screen reader ability in that because it's actually like a photo. So it'd be no different if you were to hold up a piece of paper with a photo, it's not going to say what that is. So that's the big difference with social media. And I think that there's going to have to be 
I think that from an AODA perspective, we are in compliance, but I do think that at some point they're going to have to start to look at what the uh, various socials out there mm -hmm. are doing and how we look at that from an AODA perspective. Like I think there are more advancements and tools that will allow people to do that. I was I have a friend who's 70 and he's going blind and I was trying to help him, you know, read text from the menu we were at at the restaurant or from something online. And I like it is possible. Mm -hmm. You just have to find the right tool. I guess. Yeah, so, yeah, the tools are there. I think it's it is part of policy where we can establish marketing policy that would indicate that all marketing right uh, needs to but uh, those are the platforms at, at where, so you know, facebook doesn't is, allow that twitter doesn't offer that it's not us it's or not to, our or to accommodate where possible so right. instead of you know so instead of um, only putting an image up you always put alt text mm -hmm. right so those are i mean there there are things that you you do as your um I guess way of doing business. Or on yeah. social media, like if there's if you're on Instagram and it's a story and they're an auto-generated caption, sometimes they're spelled incorrectly. So people need to go back and fix those. Right. Like when I'm yeah, and you yeah. want to be correct. <laughs> you have to put some human work into it sometimes too. And all of our YouTube has the uh, closed caption. The closed caption, and then part of it is exactly that. You sure. let it run and do its thing, but then you have to go back. And make sure that you know two hour presentation actually is the correct text that that is generated. Mm -hmm. Anything else on this item? Any other questions? Okay. So let's move on to the policy and governance review. And I thought we might just go um, article by article. Okay. And uh, I know some of the items have embedded questions or comments and changes. We can address those and also any questions or comments you have as we go along. But it won't be as painful as I just made it sound. We <laughs> <laughs> have to wait for it to come up. I might have made some edits in there too. I didn't realize they weren't for the real deal. I don't know. We did have quite a while. <laughs> um, from the point that this was, that was taken. If there's any others, I can go back and take a look at those. So I noticed throughout most of them, there's, um, I guess you can do a search for a place for library archives and museum yes. and just make it plan. Um, once it's aptly defined in the first instance, but the rest is okay. Mm -hmm. um, was there anything else under general school? Um, Okay, so nothing, anybody have any questions about that one? Okay, so next, I lost my Facebook and my Zoom here, which is interesting. There we go. Sorry, just trying to get this back up. Okay. So the authority to establish the board. Um, so just to note, depending on what happens, I guess, name change. The name okay. correction over there. Oh, I thought you were indicating that we should use the legal name. Oh. That's what, what if it doesn't get? Because if it, I mean, I, I'm just wondering, these are our policies and the legal name is the station. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Either perhaps we should indicate somewhere, and maybe that's the statement as, you know, mm -hmm. technology and the legal name is pregnant her heritage, sorry, pregnant station. Uh, common terminology. Is that some way just acknowledging that because the using more... the 2003 bylaw then? Okay. Uh, this was referring to the 2011 36 bylaw, which did not change the name. It was accepting in. So, yes, we'll have to add that in. So, what did it use in that bylaw? Heritage Depot, do you recall? It was. Uh, it was actually about their museum status with the province, not a name. Okay. It's still okay. free, yes. So we can get all of those edited. Okay. And I think that when the name changes or if the name changes or if the name doesn't change, uh, if it doesn't change, council still has to pass a bylaw. 
because the only bylaw with the name is 2003 mm-hmm. and it's the Craig Lee station. Right. Yeah. So I, I was just sort of. So one way or the other, we, we should need to, yes. to all see what the original bylaw name right. is. It's, and then, I mean, if we want to, yeah, yeah. Continue to public depot as they like commonly referred to as. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just so it's it's there for clarity. Um, and just because so we always in each of these policies we have a legal framework, which is actually quotes from the Public Libraries Act, right? So okay. there's nothing to change there. It's really just everything else is our interpretation here of how we're applying them. And so on this final. I'll just let you tell us to stop um, if there's any questions you have a particular one, but this is, so you're proposing adding and in agreements because we've had the financial agreement. The financial agreement, yes. Mm-hmm. Good point. And then all the souls return to Ontario Library Service. Well, hang on a second. Mm-hmm. Can I just, um, in rereading this, I see that there's a, Library chair at the Blue Mountains email address. I never use that. Do you use it? Do you monitor it? Uh, it will, anything that comes in will be sent to you. Oh, okay. Well, no one ever uses it. <laughs> <laughs> I should be checking that. No, it's, it's seamless. If it's forwarded to you, you don't know, really notice that. Yeah, that, 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 that makes sense. sense. Yeah, okay. The, the town prefers that we don't use our emails Absolutely. publicly so that they're not being pinged. Mm-hmm. Um, so the library chair, the library CEO, those are ones that get a little extra love from, I think, the software scanners to make sure that there's less stuff coming in from the virus. Uh, so then it's just automatically for it. Right. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Okay, going on. The disqualification of board members. I don't think we have any changes on that one. Just okay. a review. So remember to shout out if you want to ask questions. Mm-hmm. First meeting of the board. So this is basically what council's function is and that it gets moved in for me to open until there's a chair. Oh. Uh, meetings of the board. Some here, okay. yeah. So that's a really good question because these course bylaws are written pre COVID. No one really had a good way of doing electronic meetings. If someone was absent and wanted to participate, they'd have to ask for special permission really to come in on the phone. Yeah. Um, so we are more in the habit of doing hybrid meetings, but this still writes as a we prefer them to be in person. Sean. Can I ask, um, did, the, uh, did the Library Act, was it amended or changed because of COVID or attendance? The Library Act never stated. It never did. No. So then, yeah, that's Everybody what... assumed it was in person, but it didn't actually Same. have a specific, like the Municipal Act yeah. was very specific. And then they changed the Municipal Act because of COVID for virtual, to allow virtual attendance. So that's why it came back to our procedural bylaws it came to it and then it went away and then it came back again that we can't supersede what the act says. Right. So, Our it, simply talk about having open meetings. Yeah. So uh, that at that point, we were sharing either the Zoom link or letting people register to be present. Uh, and they said that that qualified when we were offline and we were off site. Mm-hmm. So we still have the ability to be open if we're here and we still have people doing um other methods of watching. So it really is just a case if we wanted to adjust the line to say that meeting attendance, um, you know, are we saying that we're hybrid? Are we saying we're in person? I know you had talked, uh, council had talked for a bit about if there was going to be a limitation of how many and, meetings they and could the, miss. And, and that's what came, what, that's what the, um, the clerks we were able to decipher was that we can't accept that right. because the act says this, and you can't superset the act, you can't limit it, you can't do anything to it. So that's why right. it's been let go. 
Yeah. So Just what we volume. have been doing here is only letting people log in on Zoom if it is a case of I can't be there because I'm ill and I don't mm -hmm. want to not be present. Uh, but at the same point, for the safety of all. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's something that you want to keep because in special situations, still counts that. Well, yeah, in effect, that's what number two currently says. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whereas saying that it's a hybrid meeting would be... Anytime anybody could just decide not to show up and just come in by Zoom. Right. And I'm comfortable with things as it is. Mm -hmm. We need some time to think here. I've seen yeah, that. I mean, I was I was coming at it from the you know some of the challenges we've had in terms of getting people to attend and making sure you have quorum and especially if we're going to get into a cold flu season. season <laughs> again. Um, so again, I mean, the special situations I guess allows allows flex that flexibility. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Okay, so no change on that. That means that there's no change on that item at all. Uh, Sorry, there was another same one. A question about attendance at meetings. What is it? Six point three. I don't know where you are. The number. Sorry. Let um, me back up to it. There we go. So uh, maybe what was it for someone? Yeah, maybe, sorry, it's number one. Um, absent from any meeting, a person shall notify the secretary prior to the day of the meeting. I know it's open because if someone's sick. Um, I'm just wondering, because I'm thinking back to people, you know, we, we um, like the three days before people can submit questions, et cetera. But if, you know, if three people on the day of say we can't make it. Right. Uh, so, and I, I think that that was, that. right. One is, again, a pre-pandemic thought of yeah. don't have a meeting and then you don't have quorum. Right. Whereas everybody knew they were going to be on vacation. Um, we, we do have the morning ofs that I woke up in the throat scratchy. And that's, I think, a bit different than... I'm going to be in Italy and oh, I forgot to say something. <laughs> yeah, that's right. uh, yeah, and well, I just didn't know if there was a time. So, where, where possible? Just putting it out there, I don't if it's not necessary. So, do you want to add a where possible to that so that you're not feeling penalized if you were to call the day of? Yeah. I was just going to say um, three days prior to the meeting, minimum, where possible, maybe. I think. Yeah, I just, to me, it was the, it's sort of the domino effect of if somebody's got a definite, what do we call it, they want to participate in the meeting, <laughs> et cetera, um, and the challenge of form. But if I'm overcomplicating it, I'm the job. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're thinking that the notification should be earlier than the day prior? Yeah. Or are you suggesting? So you said the prior to the day of the meeting, it doesn't say how prior. Yes. Um, so, you know, again. Well, the purpose of that was prior to the day of the meeting, if we save it as is, and then three of us um, wake up, I guess, the morning of the meeting going, gosh, I, I can attend, but I don't want to, you don't want me in the room with you. Mm -hmm. Then don't we fall into That's number two? And we simply say, yeah. yeah. And I mean, so we've got a way of handling that. Otherwise, yeah. telling us earlier, what's the advantage of telling it was us? Just the, the, I mean, earlier. to the point of, oh, I didn't realize, you know, like on a Monday, I realized that I've got a commitment that conflicts and comes up on the Wednesday, and there's two or three of us the day before. So, again. But, and at the previous meeting, that's part of what we do with the yeah, next sure. the next meeting when we're announcing when the next meeting is is making sure that we do a quorum as well yeah okay i think it's good okay next one is the staff piece which is not our hr it's simply the appointment of uh, the functions so we added in here the annual action plan. Yeah, that's good. 
and the change to gland. Mm -hmm. That's it. Any other questions on that one? Okay. okay. Lines of authority haven't changed. Expenses? Uh, sorry, I did have a question about staffing, and you mentioned it earlier on about um, equitable hiring. And it may be mentioned somewhere else, I'm not sure. In our actual it. HR, we have a whole aspect on hiring to be able to meet that. Right. This is the bylaw is specific to the requirement that the province says that you will appoint a CEO, you will appoint a secretary, a treasurer, and that you have given those authorities over. So the whole HR policy is a totally different piece, okay. Okay. not part of the bylaws. Okay. And I think there's a bylaw later on that says we write policy. Um, yeah. Maybe one that specifically refers to HR policy. Right. So it's just addressing the appointment requirement okay. by the, the ministry. Okay. So expenses? There's nothing on that one. Mm -hmm. And again, we have a full finance policy that is separate from that. This is specific to board expenses. Uh, the real property, again, no changes on. These next ones are kind of the boilerplate ones they put in. So we've removed our Museum Advisory Council. Previous board did that when there wasn't a requirement to hold that anymore. Sorry, I, uh, I, just, I had a question about um, uh, the curator. Mm -hmm. are, are we there yet? I don't know. 7.5? I think it's part of the... So, yeah, it just the curator um it mentions just museum and I don't know if we should call it museum and archives. Okay. Uh, sorry. I think that's in the museum policy, so correct? 18.7.5. I believe that, that's in the museum. Financial. The ability to have debt. <laughs> Grants from council, and these are just those sort of legal ones that we need to have. Inspection of records and FOI. Specific again, only to the board. And we'll look at the charitable status and then we'll have to put yes okay. mm -hmm. payments to the board you're required to have a bank account i mean the ministry has very <laughs> specific pieces in there in your name um this is the one that i was thinking possibly you were talking about the museum um, uh, no there was a heading for curator and yeah. policy number seven okay yeah i'll go back into that okay and then if the library ceased to operate. Um, and that is one that has to be modified because right now if we dissolve assets, we revert to the municipality, but under the Charitable Act, we also have to somehow create a differentiation between us. Yes. So to once the, the charitable status is approved, we would have mm -hmm. to have a line that talks about our either financial or a uh, capital purchases that were made on how those are being distributed. But the town is a qualified donee. So we would be specifying if funds were used for X purpose that that, that thing might divert to charity if we were to dissolve? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
based on what the grant or the the donation was. Yeah. So somebody could specifically say, I'm making a financial contribution on genealogy and I don't want this to go anywhere other than a historic organization such as your museum. And then maybe we say, well, who is a qualified donee that has charitable status? Uh, and then we start looking at local historic societies or those types of pieces. And so we go with the policy statement at this level and then procedures probably. Okay, good to remember that one. <laughs> the next year's action plan. So yes, it'll definitely be in there. There'll be a few things that'll have to be touched once the charitable status mm -hmm. happens. And then museum general. Right. Any questions? And then authority again, there's the CEO statement in there as so with the curator. We have a um, line drawing. Mm -hmm. Is that is there a reason it's in our policy? <laughs> uh, it we put it in there simply because it was one of, there's only two policies that had to do with the Craig Leaf. Heritage Depot, and we just did it because it was in addition to the Blue Mountains Public Library. But nope, it doesn't have to be on there. It is a board bylaw. Yeah, just curious. Actually, that triggers another question. Are there, uh, I don't know what the name, but are there other specific brand marks or trademark names that we, that are the property of the library? No. And is that the property of the library? That is the logo that the that is affiliated. Yes, okay. and if the name is being looked at differently, I mean Heritage Depot on the bottom is simply a station. We can make that if we choose to keep that. We don't have to keep that logo down. Mm -hmm. I would suggest we remove it because I think it yeah. indicate it, it, to me marketing. It infers a trademark that we own that has some reference to. That needs to be covered somewhere, <laughs> but it's not. It's not a trademark. It's just our brand. Just yeah. yeah. Uh, agenda and multi-year. So I think that we've addressed. And just so you know, what's on the screen now, the multi-year is something that we approve each January. Uh, which I don't know if you've uh, noticed the extent to which we've been. Doing this month for month this year, like it just kept on moving it around. So it's really meant as a general guide so that we make sure we cover all of these things. And remember what is required in each year. Mm -hmm. So, right, in May should have been when this was done. That was when we had a number of people who were out. Um, we are required to have seven meetings in a year. We plan to have 10 meetings in a year. So it's not the end of the world if we all say that in May. There was too difficult to get a meeting. We can always let three go. Um, but this was one of them that moved to June and then June was very heavy and then moved to July and then July was very heavy. And we said, just keep keep pushing. We'll get there. <laughs> okay. But yes, we've already done the bulk of what was needed for this piece. And then the job description was something that was added last year. And that's sort of the, what it means to be a board member. And then we had a few health and safety, which really only had a few wording changes having to do with pandemic again, and our use of naloxone on site or access to naloxone on site. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, naloxone um, and the province are really working to make sure that we are no longer referring to a overdose. It is a drug poisoning. So, and that's part of looking at um, addictions being not a choice, but that it is actually a mental health piece and it is a uh, disability. So looking at drug poisoning, just a, a change in the way we address that. So we made those changes in here. And then our fire and emergency safety. Uh, we have an AED now at both locations. 
Um, again, CHD will be pulled out of all of these as we look at name changes. And then work alone. We are, again, not planning work alone anywhere, but work alone can always happen. Mm -hmm. um, and work alone needs to not just be considered from you as policy that it's one person working, because you can have five people in this building and still be caught in a corner. That's really what work alone is. It's more than just knowing that you have another person in the building, but that you're, you're thinking about how people are safe throughout the building. So if somebody, for example, was in our storage room and somebody was to enter there, it's, you know, it's a very uh, back corner, concrete mm -hmm. walls. It's not the kind of thing that we, we know is going to have a lot of uh, ability for people to hear. Uh, bathrooms are similar. You know, those are things that we just try to think about that staff are always saying, I'm going to. And we're reminding ourselves that there's we should be checking on our, our partners as we're working through our days. The museum has uh, the basement level. So respectful workplaces is the way that we've addressed all of the violence, harassment, uh, discrimination, uh, sexual and physical uh, harassment and violence. And then our AODA. So we've simply pulled out the vulnerable sector. Um, the, the police are really looking differently at vulnerable, vulnerable sector. So not all staff, not all boards used to do the vulnerable sector, even though you might never have one-on-one -on -one contact with a member of the community. So they're really looking now to say who is involved with the programming and making sure that that's, that's being cleaned up. So most of our volunteers do not have vulnerable sector because they would never be alone doing the job. And then again, our uh, AODA addressing opioid use and drug addiction and uh, drug poisoning. And then intellectual freedom. We have one big change and this came up from our April meeting. I think this is really the only one that is sort of a material change out of our policies. Um, we had talked about book challenges, what's happening with uh, not just materials, but also our programs. Uh, so instead of calling it book challenges, we're just looking at challenges mm -hmm. um, and identifying that people are uh, now required to do something if they want this to happen. And also the push uh, has been members from outside of communities are calling in and requesting so our policy is saying that you also need to be an active cardholder for at least 90 days and a member of the community. So we do have reciprocal borrowing. Uh, so we don't want somebody from Meaford to be telling us to take a book out of the collection. It's their choice um, to read it, A, but it's also our choice to allow other communities to use our resources and it's reciprocal. So that's a good thing, but limits on where we're going to make decisions. And then also to know that you're a cardholder for 90 days. I mean, somebody can certainly wait the three months to put in the uh, the request, but um, I think that those will deter the individuals who are public libraries across all provinces and territories to remove certain items. We have a question about Center for Free Expression. I've never heard of that before. Uh, Center for Free Expression is um, is part of they're with CFLA. And I you think I would know because so I just actually so I just actually library. resigned from the committee and I can't actually tell you what the path is. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, so they have been collecting all challenges. I see. Okay. So it's a library initiative. Yes. Okay. 
as if in, in conjunction with the Canadian Federation, is it doing it in conjunction with the ALA, the American Library Association? No, it is Canadian. Mm -hmm. um, so at this point, they're taking public library, but they're also looking at academic um, mm. items as well. Um, they may or may not start looking at school. School libraries being challenged are kind of a different piece because they do have a mandate to offer curriculum-based materials. So that's kind of a sticky one. Uh, whereas academic libraries, university libraries are a little bit more open on what they offer. Uh, the public libraries have been the big biggest of the challenges because community interest on what we hold. And what is, how will that information be used? I mean, I certainly think it's a good <laughs> idea to do it, but I'm, how do they keep using it? Uh, so at this point, the database is only about two years old. Uh, they have been collecting with some of the big four in the province. Uh, so Ottawa, uh, um, Toronto, um, London. London. Yes, London. I, at this point, I think we have a few thousand items that have already been um, re recorded as challenges. So any challenge that is made, you are simply offering that information to the database so that we're starting to see what is being challenged, what is the rationale behind the challenge, how is the library working through that challenge, and then what is the outcome. And they're starting to build a database to determine under free expression is there trends that are happening and we're seeing really it's the same letters that have been coming. Um, as a member who was recently sitting at the table, I, I had told them that I don't actually forward any of the letters that come to us because they're not our community members. So I look at it and I say, it's a form letter from, uh, you know, for Canada now telling me that we should remove these four items and then I simply throw it out because it's not our community telling us to do it. It's, you know. Does that happen to us, right? The, the challenges have been growing over the past few years. Um, the violence around the challenges have certainly been increasing uh, and challenges have no longer just been books but now it's the programs. So especially around the drag story time, uh, Meaford is doing a program and I'm so excited because not only are they doing their story time, I believe it's October 15th, not only are they doing like an 11 o'clock story time with two really well-known uh, individuals, they're then going to do an adult program after that at one o'clock. So a bit of time for kiddos to move on and then the adults to do it. And it's, um, it's a bingo. So they play music from various, you know, 80s, 70s, <laughs> 80s, 90s, and then you have to find it on your card. And it's just a real fun time to be together and share space in the library. So um, they're the first that I've seen that have done sort of a double program like that. So really excited. I'll be there. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm registering. <laughs> Can I go back? Briefly to 89.2. So just a couple of things up here. Mm -hmm. And this is another example of something written in a different era. Mm -hmm. um, the second line, second sentence, democracy cannot flourish unless material representing mm -hmm. all new points is freely available. And I, I agree with that. But then I think about false news. You know, or you know, the meet the challenge the media has had by you know you want to represent both sides, but mm -hmm. both sides have gone extreme, mm -hmm. and there may not be a lot of facts involved. You know, is there some way? I, I don't want to say this in a way that's going to blow up at us, but it's you know, but not based on false facts, and then you have difficulty of defining what those are. Yeah, I, I, the last sentence is intended to say that, and I know you're right. This is. 2018 is when we did this, but it's kind of a standard statement that yeah. comes that other libraries have been using for some time. And maybe that last sentence isn't enough, um, but staff may limit content based on quality or authority. That's where we get into the viewpoints may, may push past an actual viewpoint and now be into a fake news mm -hmm. or fake content. Yeah. 
Actually, that's helpful. I mean, the word free authority is, an, is important. So you have to really read that whole paragraph as one. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, I, but I, I read it and there was something that I think to me, I, I just, I would question the statement democracy cannot flourish. To me, it's, I mean, it, I don't disagree. I'm not sure the role that, that statement makes. And if it in any way gives somebody an opportunity mm -hmm. to challenge and say, well, you know, this is my viewpoint. And you say here that it should be available. Um, I would just question, is that sentence needed? Strike the sentence. Does it posit, does it does it create more of a potential concern these days? To your point, Laurie, about yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know, where people might hang, you know, hang their challenges on. Mm -hmm. um, whereas, you know, the first sentence and the last sentence are very, you know, this is what we are. Um, and secondly, this is what this is how we support that is. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think it's interesting because I think the last sentence says what we need to say. That middle one is the one that introduces. That's what mm -hmm. I kind of went. Eh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've never, I've never felt that way before. But the base just almost everything happening now. Yeah, yeah. 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 to their advantage. Yeah. So we should delete it. Do you think the middle sentence, the democracy? Yeah, that's sentence. what I meant. Yeah, I'm okay deleting it. Other thoughts or comments? Yeah, I agree. I think it's a good idea actually just listening to this discussion and seeing what's happening. Mm -hmm. Another can of worms that could open up on the way here, I was listening to a French radio station and they were talking about a website, and I don't know exactly what it is, that cleans the URL of a website that is currently blocked on social media. So if there's a CBC or if there's, a, I won't mention any, okay, I just did, but if there was a Canadian news article that you're trying to access online, there's a website that you can go to by taking the URL that's blocked and then basically cleaning up the link so that you can access mm -hmm. that. That might come to play in the library when people are searching things. So that's just something to be mindful of that we may be discussing in future meetings. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whether that's like our website's blocked on the we don't have any filtering, no. Okay, because in schools they're filtered for, right. for age appropriate things. Yeah. Okay. So my recommendation is this is a once every four year policy. I would recommend that this comes back next year um, and see where things are and if there's more that needs to be addressed just because this feels like the intellectual freedom argument is going to kind of keep spinning uh, over the next few years as we're looking at this. And you may want to sort of just keep an eye on this policy to make sure it's still meeting your needs. So we will take up the middle sentence or what? No, I was not sure what the other years. Yes, yes no, sentence. no, I say strike that, but I'm saying yeah, instead okay, of saying that the four year yeah. cycle for this, is we don't touch this until the new board's first year, that you may just want to have this uh, noted that it'll be coming back mm -hmm. next year just to keep an eye on it. Um, and there's a new policy, it right? For sure. No, it's not. It's, not. Yeah. it's a system policy, so it won't be scheduled to come back mm -hmm. until the third year. We pulled this because it was something that we knew needed to be edited now, but I believe it's the third year this normally comes back. Right. Because you suggest we want to cycle it back in for the week. Yes. Yeah. Because it's a, it's a bit of a turning situation right now. Yes, I, I feel that there may be new verbiage that's going to be more impactful, that some of these sort of statements that we've all been using for a while might start to be... Uh, changed or there may be more pieces that we need to bring in. Um, the museum intellectual freedom, you may also find as we continue to progress with um, truth and reconciliation, that there become some statements that people are starting to look at in our local history policy. Um, decolonizing our collection and understanding that our collection was built as 
our region from a non-Indigenous perspective. So all of these pieces uh, have gaps that, you know, it doesn't make the collection uh, not worthy. It just means that in the collection, there are gaps of thinking as well as gaps of items. So I think that there may be some pieces that come up with this in, in the coming coming years that you might just want to keep an eye on this policy. Okay. And that will be following any changes by either basically the Kennedy Library Association or the OLA that tend to lead in statements of this sort, intellectual freedom. And then I would add on to that the OMA, the Ontario Museum Association and the mm -hmm. Canadian Museum Asso Association. Since we do have a statement there about galleries and a statement about mm -hmm. museums, mm -hmm. museums and archives. Okay, thank you. I did have, um, just reading through this, I don't have a specific point because I'm not sure where it would fit, but it, it's just, it, it's what you called out is the notion of programs and space bookings and events. Mm -hmm. And so all those systems, if we should actually just add in programming special events or what was that the record before? Um, programming events and space booking. I, I just, I think for just further reinforcement mm -hmm. because it's, there's servicing collections. So we miss, but that that's not ours. That's right. From that's that. the... So back up into what we were talking about, just the three. Which one were you? Yeah, so limit, you know, for me to read. Um, I don't know if it's in each of these, if you say, or attend programming events or book space. Um, I just, again, to reinforce that it's, it's not just yeah. Only just read or participate in the mm -hmm. program. Yeah. Or view in the case good. of videos. Hmm. Zoom. Uh, do we want to look at our Connect Explore Create? Again, back to our mission. Uh, well, we've talked about, you know, the ability to connect with people, to explore within our collections, within our programs, within our activities, and then the create uh, being the things that we're doing with our maker items or I don't know if we want to totally move it away from freedom to read. Or do you just want to add in the the freedom to read or participate in programs and services. I think that's more about who is doing the, yes. the reading and the viewing and the participating. And that's more about the content of what they're reading, viewing, or participating in. That makes sense. Okay, so no individual or minority group should be allowed to limit the community's freedom to read or participate in programs and services. Yeah, I think that would. Yeah. Okay. And then we've struck the next one. And then the last line is BMPL staff may limit content based on quality or authority, but will always strive to hold a balanced reflection. Okay, how about a balanced collection? Oh, that's true. Um, balanced collection and program plan. I think in 2018, we spent a lot of time going back to take library out of things and make it a glam. <laughs> <laughs> that may be the next one is looking at. Our own yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I think that covers all of our policy review. We just need motion. Um, 
And the motion basically says that the board approved the annual policy review of, and then list the reviews and approve the amended policies. Um, all of this you'd have to add later. Yes, I will. <laughs> I just didn't <laughs> think you wanted to, them all in there. Yes. Okay, so are people okay approving it with this kind of odd? To be filled in <laughs> sections yep. in the motion. Fine. Yes. Various That's language. Good. Yes. Yep. Okay. So may I have a move for a seconder, please? Um, Pat and Joanne. Um, so that's approving the um, the list of policies and the amended policies. All in favor? Yeah, that's carried. Um, next one is the charitable application update. Um, so I don't want to introduce it, Serena, or people comfortable and just want to ask questions. It is up to date. Um, the draft that I gave mm -hmm. to the board when we did the uh, email, uh, there were some things that have happened since. Uh, so at this point, our Ontario level uh, amendments have now happened. So all of the articles of amendment have been approved by uh, Minister Ministry of Ontario's uh, Secretariat, and the uh, legal counsel is moving forward now on the actual application again to CRA. Uh, so what happened is uh, we were really stuck by ANCA, so the Ontario uh, Non-for-Profit Corporations Act, which actually was just approved recently, but the date is 2010. So when they the writ was dropped on it, it was 2010, and it sort of sat there for 20, 12, 13 years. 12, 13 years, <laughs> 12 years before it was approved. Um, so, of course, the document is well expired. We need to even be looking at ANCA now. It needs to be revised. Um, but when all of the changes went through, we were kind of at the point where it was moving through and they said, you no longer qualify because you have to go back and fix these ANCA pieces. So everything got kicked back. Um, according to the Ontario Library Service, we're the first of the libraries to attempt charitable status since ANCA. Uh, there are a number of them prior that are in um, and they don't have to make any changes. So we're kind of the case study mm. and they are watching us to determine what needs to happen and how the bylaws had to be edited. And it really was those articles of amendment needed to be cleaned up with those that they had any material change to us but according to CRA they did. So will there be anything ancient in our bylaws or policies to shift to that language? No okay. It was just language that they were requiring everybody under ANCA now to have that we just didn't meet the standard articles of uh, corporation for charitable status. Yeah. Okay. So we're cleaned up there. Um, I do anticipate this is an eight month. Um, I will work with our incoming CEO to make sure that as much history is present at that point. My recommendation to the board and my recommendation to our incoming CEO is when this happens, feel free to give me a call. If there's a question on why is this or how is this? I'm I'm not far. I'm happy to uh, update and at least bring the thinking up. I'm going to assume that the first week of orientation where we're doing all of the things that need to be done, this is one of those pieces that are going to be so far removed on priority in uh, the thinking of the incoming CEO that certainly, you know, a call when it happens is good and then she'll be able to speak with authority mm -hmm. when she has to speak to CRA or with our um, our legal service. So happy to, to assist mm -hmm. at that point when it comes just so that there's one more bit of living memory on there. 
Um, that's great. Thank you. Um, can I just ask you? You mean, this means what you mean, but your language at the bottom of page two, the board may choose to direct a handshake call between the outgoing and incoming CEO. I don't really know what a handshake call. Yes. Um, so, you know, something that is not coming in as a consultant, it's just let me give you a brief reminder of what this is about. And then the CEO makes decisions as the CEO chooses to move forward. Happy to just be be there as a reminder of what had happened in the past. But yes, that would be. Okay. I would say it's extremely courteous of you to do that. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. It, it, I, we've already taken the eight months and had to start over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we don't want this to be something that is an excuse because the wrong answer is given to the wrong person. So yes, just get it done so that you have what we hoped out of this, the ability to apply for more funds outside of our community. Um, this has nothing to do with local donations. We can run all of our local donations right through the municipality. They do our, uh, you know, our tax returns for us. This is about qualifying for some of those foundations and bigger grants that unless you are a charitable foundation or charitable entity, they don't want to talk to you. And they will not accept a municipal number. Many of them will not accept a municipal number. Mm -hmm. And so we will need separate financial um, yeah. to for that because it won't go through the Yes. Um, the CEO will be maintaining those pieces. Um, at that point, my recommendation is always that you open up a tertiary bank account mm -hmm. that you keep segregated, segregated accounts. Um, but the types of things that'll be on there still would end up being reported. It was one audit and a really, mm -hmm. you know, if you were to qualify for one big grant, it's simply money in, money out, and it is being accounted for uh, with the town in the same way. It's just how are we looking at if somebody is giving a um, a segregated donation, if there's you know any 10-year grants that you're receiving that are you have to hold it for a certain period until you do the project, and if not, then it can turn over. So all of those types of things will still be reported. It's just it will be in separate. But if we need financial guidance on it, if, you know, I mean, again, someone may make a donation with this, you know, things that we have to consider. Is that, is the town supporting us or do we need independent financial? That's what I'm just wondering. Should we I can't imagine there's going to be no. any questions that would be put in donations short of, you know, if, the board chose to start accepting stocks or property donations. That's a very different level, and you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, and in that case, I would say yes, you want to have a financial advisor. Um, but it's so a town, so the, so the town is coordinating the receipts as well for the charitable mm -hmm. donation. No. no, so those are the, the we, my recommendation is that really nothing changes on the day to day except those one offs that you now qualify for. Yeah. So if Joe down the road still gives us $2,500 in November, we still put that through our bank account and ask for the town to give the receipt because it qualifies in that way. And then we don't report that on our uh, T3010 that's going on council's records. And we're only putting through that one big grant through, you know, the Ford Foundation yeah. that needs to be very uh, differently accepted. And you and, need and to do that because what you, I did this with the school boards when I set up for Halton, a separate foundation. And you need to keep that one, can I touch it? Because you have to make the town, there will be somebody on the town council that will decide they have some say in that. Mm -hmm. And they think that can't happen because I had to then push the trustees away right. from having any say in that. And that's why we had our separate 
you had to have those for those specific ones. And those are funds that the contract that you signed, the agreement that yeah. you signed, it lays out exactly how it's going to be done and you're agreeing to it when you take it. So in that, you don't need financial advisors for that piece. Um, and the other pieces are funding agreement with council says we may have reserves, we may hold funds. So there's nothing that would be a situation where then council is saying, well, wait a minute, that needs to be, it's, it's, and it's yeah. not really two separate records. It's still going to all be on the same audit of the Blue Mountains Public Library, because it is one entity. We don't have a foundation. We don't have a friends group. We opted to make the board be the board. Just again, for clean, tidy lines. Okay. And you don't want to set up a situation where somebody in council maybe thinks that you shouldn't be applying for a certain type of a private foundation mm -hmm. or whatever. You don't want to set up a situation where those are conflicts. Yes. Because there are one in Collingwood that's happening. And so you don't want to get in that situation. And it was um, real, really clearly stated in our studies with the community that they do not want us coming back and asking for money. Mm -hmm. um, money is through taxation. Money is through the grant that the community already gives us. So don't keep going back and asking. And the reason then for doing this level of charitable work is to look for funds outside of the community. And there's many when we are a glam that we're going to qualify for. Mm -hmm. We've never applied for gallery money because a library doesn't qualify. And we are not incorporated as a gallery. Um, but now with the charitable end, it's moot because you can apply as a charity. Because because of the affiliate, because of the close affiliation, like you would you you wouldn't be allowed, you wouldn't be able to apply for OTF, right? To review the bathroom. OTF unfortunately is the one that says regardless if you are a charitable, a charitable library, you must apply through your municipality. They are oh. the only group that says that oh. because they know there are 444 municipalities and there are pretty darn close to that public libraries and they would have twice as many applicants coming in. So there was a point where um, actually uh, Souls under Lori's uh, leadership at that point worked very closely with the OTF and got a stream specific for libraries. But in 2014 or 2015, when they redid all of their uh, their programs and created the 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 seed, the grow, and whatever the third is, uh, their new process, they actually removed the library stream. So now it doesn't make a difference about charitable status. The only way we could apply separately from the municipality is if we partnered with another charity we then qualify because they would be the lead. Okay. So now there's no way to get those bathrooms <laughs> done unless council sets the priority and then council would be the lead on that and we would be working with them. Yeah. Any Caesars that I heard about. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, so are we done on the charitable application? I think so, yes. No, no. That's okay. Um, then let's move on to, I think you're ahead of us. Um, so the update on the Craig Lake station name change, um, public meeting and correspondence. So, so I touched on my part of that earlier. But. So the, the public meeting is set, correspondence is coming. I've received two um, notices from the clerk that something has been received. I anticipate it'll continue to come through. Um, really the biggest update is my requesting the clerks to do a deep dive on their own bylaws. And there has never been a name change from the Craigley station by council according to their own policies. Oh. So the committee began using a name and it kind of Stuck. Um, but at the same point, it's not legally the name of the entity. The only legal body document that council has ever made 
is the 2003-78 bylaw that says the land and building shall be known as the Craigleith Station. So there are committee reports from 2007, um, 2008, where there were many versions of names that they were coming through. Um, at one point, it was that's six words long, a name, um, but there's never been an actual name change. So the discussion at this point that I've brought to our CAO is we're still saying the same thing, but the change in that is that we're not actually asking to change the name. <laughs> we're now saying we need to start using the name. Um, there are two signs that need to be changed. And this is where in the public on various Facebook groups, there is a whole lot of discussion about the cost of the name, the cost that the name change is going to bring specifically about signs. Um, so if I could just address that one, there are two signs that need to be changed. Uh, one is the sign, well, actually it's three, but on either side of the intersection, there is the directional sign that is part of the MTO's uh, directional wayfinding on Highway 26. Uh, we have to work with a company called Todd's. That's all of those signs. We pay them annually. Every year we have to pay for the sign to be there. There is no additional change to pay for the name to be changed on it. So on the next payment in 2024, should the name be changed to Craigleith Station, we simply say, yes, we still want a big M that says Craigleith Station, and they are required to change that sign for the same price that we already pay. Yes. So we pay it anyways. We simply then tell them to change the name, and that is on the ministry's expense for that. So there's no change there. The other one is the sign that is in front of the building that has the old logo sign configuration of the town. Uh, that sign was already slated to be changed because all of the other town signs had been changed. And we held off waiting for the museum to be finished, mm -hmm. knowing that there was a whole lot of stuff that had to happen. Um, a, that might not be the proper location for the sign. So don't put something up that we have to take down and move over 10 feet. Um, and B, are we going to actually change name? So the need for that, regardless, because they have to change it to bring it into their new sign function. Um, and they will do that as soon as this decision has been made on the name. And it will cost no less or no more <laughs> than was already going to happen. Yeah. So the argument of how much time has been spent on this, it's a policy standard. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. Really, we didn't have to follow the process. We could have said, put the name back but to what it is. But this is about what the community has asked for is to be consulted on these pieces. Yeah. So the fact that the community has asked to be consulted, this is what we do. That's part of the policy. It's why it's in there. So for members of the community to then say it is ludicrous to spend time talking to the community, I we just have to let that go and let them do their spin yeah. because we are following the process. And it's the right process according to the town's policies. And unfortunately, in 2007 and 8, when the last name changing happened, it didn't follow the process. And that's why we're here and we're trying to undo that. Well, and it, it is worth it because if we had to go forward and legally change the name, the cost would be significant. Which yes. you did tell them that. Yes. So if like the converse is if we actually if the community, community yeah, right, yeah, well, everybody wants off. to go with Devo, then you know we're talking yes. significant change um, and mm -hmm. significant time and effort in terms of re-registration. So two things on that one. If the overwhelming voice at this time mm -hmm. is to keep Devo, I think we actually have to go through the process again because you ask the question of changing the name from the depot to uh, Craigley Station. 
And you may find that the people who were not opposed to that didn't speak. Only the people opposed to it speak. So I don't think that council can in good conscience say, we're going to pass a bylaw now to make it the Craig Leith Heritage Depot because that isn't what the discussion yeah. is for. We would actually have to have a whole new process to go back and say, <laughs> now we're actually going to legally change the name to the Craig Leith Heritage Depot right. and it start the process again, start the communication yeah. again, have another community hearing again, and then council can pass the bylaw, at which time they would also need to um, be in contact with the ministry to make sure all updates are changed at that time. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's really about the only. Don't yeah, I mean, <laughs> that, that's really the only thing. And then at that point, still the same signs would have to be changed that have to be changed anyways. There's no real cost there. I'm not sure what kind of cost there is with the ministry. There may be a filing fee, but it's probably just a labor cost of having to, you know, log on to something that hasn't been logged into since 2003 <laughs> and update it. And I'm sure all the people mm -hmm. have, people and players have changed. So passwords would have to be set up. Mm -hmm. Getting reports. <laughs> you said you got a couple of um, indications, I guess, from the clerk about Correspondence? You're getting are you getting copies of the correspondence? Or you should be saying I've re I've received three comments or I've received. Um, I have received the the, the actual letters, correspondence. Yes. Yeah. Do we have an idea of which way they're falling, or is that really confidential? <laughs> <laughs> it's equal. Yes. One, I I anticipate as it comes closer, we may hear some more. I know that there are quite a number of people that I have spoken to that have contacted me saying, you know, I don't know why we have to go through this process. It, it's common sense. We should be changing the name. Um, and I think now we'll have to reach out to some of those who may feel I don't need to do anything because the name is the Craig Luth Station and just make sure that they're actually putting their voice forward. Mm -hmm. Verification. Because I do think that many in council were hearing. I don't know if it was the social media voice or the the council discussion. Most the majority of council members were talking that the depot is what they wanted to see, mm -hmm. just from their own histories and understanding. So I think that we need to make sure that there's you know a clear understanding of why this is being done and strip out the fact that the restaurant name is what people know it as. People will know it as what you call it when you change the day. That's right. And there may still be people who call it the depot, and that's okay because we'll all know and we'll all move together and make the changes as we go. It's just like anything. And sure enough, like when, uh, no, not to pick on you guys, but when you moved here, would you have known that it was a restaurant? No. no, would you care? <laughs> you know, and that's what the most of the community it's been gone for a while. That's right, that's been gone for a long time. Very long time. So, and it wasn't like it was a real peach when the town no. bought it either. So. I, I think, though, that when we look at people's living memory, the majority of people who have a limit, living memory of the town mm -hmm. who may have been here for 60 or 70 years, yeah. the bulk of that was a restaurant. And that's that, you know, that's where the passion is. Yeah. And I understand that, but we are not, that building does not have historic status because of the restaurant. Yeah. And if they, I think people are, you know, we're thinking of things um, costing a lot more money nowadays. I think people, if they know that, yeah, ironically, the people on Facebook who are screaming and yelling about it costing so much money, if they found out that it doesn't cost money yeah. to, Change the sign, and if they did want, you know, more information, really yeah, yeah, they wouldn't be voting. They're just they looking for something to say. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, That's really good information. You know, I'll let a certain counselor know that seems to think it might cost money. Know that money is paid every year, and that it's, it's whatever we want. Yeah. We have to pay annually for the sign for the availability of the sign, and that's to the province. To the pro, it's a a handler, but yes. It's the Todd sign, T-O-D-S. It's an acronym. Uh, we pay that annually, 
and so it'll, say whatever it is. it'll say it'll have a big M and then whatever the name is at the time. Good to know. Yep. I will pass that information on. And actually, we had to pay um, a premium two years ago because they wanted everybody to move from four by four wood to steel poles. So there was a fee that we all had to pay to have that taken down and pay for the poll. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, what they do annually. So actually the we pay it, but is it like how much is it that has it? This comes out of the library budget too. Yes. The library museum's budget. Yep, we, we pay that as part of our I can look it up, but I think it is like twelve hundred. Twelve hundred a year. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. As part of the tourism program, yeah. the library signs we don't pay for, they're all on town property, right. surprisingly. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we still have the same one on 26, but they don't include us in that. We're allowed to put those up for free. But that's the thing. Like, yeah. I, I'm not going to take over this, but like looking at it, like our limit is open. I remember this was called the Ellie Shore Memorial Library. It was called the Mount Public Library. It was the Ellie Shore Memorial Library. Right. And then it got, it got updated or changed. So, you know, like, you call us the Ellie Shore Library. And again, it was a very similar situation on that, that the, the community called it the Ellie Shore Memorial Library, which was the building. Mm -hmm. And the province came in and said, no. you can't call it that. Yeah. The Public Libraries Act says you must be known as name of city or town. Public yeah. library. Yeah. So no, I don't disrespect. Yeah. So it was a very similar situation, though, that you know, it sort of happened. The naming happened. Everybody's accepted it, but then you have to go back at one point and say, "But this is what." Get the correct history right. here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that I don't really heard about. They changed it. They're trying to change the official name of the one sounds the Gravers Health System, and they've come out with this new. It's called Bright Shore. Oh. And the hospitals are going crazy. The like uh, Meaford and any of the hospitals, they're just getting so much throwback because mm -hmm. it was Owen Sound that decided it has to be the Bright Shores. We can't be the Gray Bruce Health Unit. We have to be. The, they came up with this new name, and the guy that seemed to be a municipal requirement. The, the, the senior <laughs> region. <laughs> exactly. 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 He put out. He put out this YouTube on why it was changed, what he did, and I was talking to a friend who works in the PR at a couple of hospitals, and she said, "We are just inundated. Yeah, he can't get on, and he's put out this anyway." It's you know, called, so now it's, it's called the Bright Shores. But you know, also the people in Markdale are like, there are no shores. I, I know. There's no better name than the other. I guess we should get back on track. Yeah. Yeah. I apologize. Back to it. Um, so, our next discussion is the uh, Council Response Committee, the work they're doing. Um, and the first item here is the Usage and Needs Assessment Report for Council. And we are meeting, we have, have a committee of the whole. Um, proposed for next week. Yeah. Sometime I've got the date. Um, is there anything else you want to discuss here? I've circulated the documents, and I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> uh, the only, I mean, there are a couple things in there. Just um, I know you've got so much on your plate. Just to make sure, I will put your some time into that to make um, sure before the meeting. The first thing is just you know, is this information available? Um, and and if you want to identify if there's somebody on staff who can help pull it, that you want me to work with directly, I'm totally happy to do that. Yeah, just because I put in things like sure, this might be a good argument. To, do we have this information? <laughs> but most of that I pulled the information we have. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions of Joanne right now? I would just say thank you for all your hard work. Yes. <laughs> And I would, I'll be the first one to to push that at my colleagues that all of this was coming in by a volunteer. So be thankful for what you're getting and don't nitpick too badly. We can have you open with that statement. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Deep down. laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, so the next one is the multi use feasibility study. 
And I think at our last meeting, we were basically asking you, Sabrina, to go back and to the town and say, how, how do we engage with you on this as a um, partner? So I had a meeting this morning with the, uh, the CAO. It's my quarterly meeting. Uh, I did let him know that we were looking for a morning or an afternoon in late November. Uh, he's going to get that with the clerk set up uh, so that we can have that as a uh, special meeting of council. Uh, so that way at that meeting, council will actually make decisions and make directions. Uh, and one of the pieces that I talked about with him was as we provide this needs assessment, the current usage, some of the projections of where the community is going and extrapolating what that's going to mean, um, that we are hoping that there'll be very clear direction from council on that particular study, uh, the multi-use feasibility study. Um, they will probably have had their tender out and maybe even be sort of in early stages, but he knows at this point that we're looking for library services in the East End to not just be a stakeholder, but that it's a component of that study that needs to be included. So that we will be looking at those pieces and we will be partners then on that piece. So I have spoken to him about that. But um, don't we already have clear direction from council that we are to be included in the development of that study? Yes. And are we being included in the development? I've asked where we are with that, so I'll find out. I know their RFPs were already written on both Collingwood and um, the town's end. I know there's kind of a holding pattern. <laughs> well, the two of them are figuring out if they are indeed going to be working together um, and what that looks like. So I've asked to be involved in this piece. And then something that's kind of a note to know is the Collingwood uh, feasibility study RFP that was being drafted, the library CEO was a member of that drafting team. So we'll hope that although it hasn't been already locked down on the town's end, but there will be some involvement on, on my part that we can actually We make sure that the library is a key. Do you know the timing on the RFP? Because this proposal of a joint meeting with council for us is at the end of November. I don't. I will keep working on this before. I'm sure it will be out at that point, but probably not started. Okay. Okay. I guess we can take some comfort that um, the library is being involved at the Collingwood end, even so. if there's no sense yet that we will be, we will be allowed to be involved at this end. Right. Are there two multi-use feasibility studies going on, one at each end? Why? What are you? Well, I mean, not, not to our it. I mean, it's really just about a multi-use feasibility study, and that we know, we'll see from Collingwood today, okay. that there was a big discussion um, at Council, Collingwood Council, about whether or not Collingwood and Blue Mountains would participate in a joint feasibility study, and it passed something like five four. Um, and so they are they are going they are developing this together. And since it's Collingwood and Blue Mountains, it's basically the east side. If your question is, is there also a second one happening with Meaford? Nothing I've heard or read in <laughs> in Collingwood. And I don't think Meaford, but I think the question when we were at our meeting in June or July. Um, it was presented as the municipality's multi-use study of all facilities. So if it does partner with Collingwood, I don't know that the West End is included in that. Mm -hmm. That is a good question to, to follow up on. Mm -hmm. Further clarification, because is, is yes, this a feasibility study? I thought it was just to do the study of respective jurisdictions 
multi-use facilities. And the, com the combining of resources was to get sort of a, a one price for, you know, yes. kind of a bulk deal on these fees. Right, it is not a feasibility studies. study to say, are we building one building that's shared by the two uh, municipalities. Yeah, so that, that, it, it is two separate point. municipalities okay. looking to hire the same firm. Yeah, and a consultant. Yeah, yeah. two, yeah. two yeah. separate. Okay. 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 Yeah. And our neighbors have said, no, thank you. Well, not even no, thank you. The neighbors have just rejected it. Huh. Can't say we didn't try. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't understand what, what they Our neighboring did. municipalities rejected the offer to join us on a multi use of a feasibility study. Like I said, all of us neighbors, because we're, we're smack in the middle between we've got what well, we've got calling me, which is different county, too, I know. But then we've got Greyhounds, we've got Meeford, and you know, like we go around and nobody wants to participate yeah. except for. Except for calling. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, we calling to change our consultant to do our respective service. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because what's working for okay. our. Okay. Like, all right. And I guess it depends on how they write that RFP, whether what they would look for is any recommendations for a joint facility, as opposed to simply a bulk deal on two separate studies. Mm -hmm. Very high level, that's what they'll say right now. Mm -hmm. High level, very high level. Yeah. Okay. They may still be discussing this when we have our meeting in November. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of moving parts. Yeah, and I, I still mean, be getting discussed next year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think what's important, and that's sort of the direction that for our first stage is just establishing and communicating almost back to the, the role of the library and um, the need for expanded services mm -hmm. and space to deliver services for this growing community. So regardless of where or what happens with a multi-use, I mean that is one possible solution. Mm -hmm. But you know, I think I think it's important for us to, to separate the two. Really. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Really very much that there is a need. <laughs> there is a need to expand so that we can serve this the you know this growing community. But um yeah, so so yeah I was gonna say from a timing perspective when it happens, it happens, and that sort of piece of information about that study, you know, once we've laid the groundwork, it'll be easier to say, okay, yes, we know we have to expand, therefore, you know, it sort of reinforces that need to be part of it. Absolutely. As yeah. opposed to, it needs to be tied to it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, and the next item is the Craigley <laughs> Working Group. And... Whether there's one or two, and you're going to try and get some clarity on that. I did get some clarity, and I'm I'm more confused than I was before. <laughs> so I asked the question, and the question was clear response that the Craigleith Working Committee is a council's working committee, and the Craigleith Working Committee that is the um, Ratepayers Association's committee is their committee. <laughs> so again, with things having the same name, it gets a little bit confusing. Um, one is not the other. Do they have the same membership? Yeah. I do not believe that the town's Craigleith Working Committee has the there, appointments there yet. Us, there has not been an official selection or appointment. Correct. Right. So as, as the Blue Mountain Ratepayers Association Craigleith Working Committee continues with the exact same mandate that the mm -hmm. town's committee is going to have, according to what the town's mandate is. We, we've got one group that's doing their work, and then at another point, council is going to appoint members. And I don't know what the connection or collaboration may be at that point, if work will be accepted. But at this point, Ratepayers Association is doing their thing. And the town has a working committee that they're also looking at other areas of the municipality because Laura Bay is now looking to have a working committee on their area as well. But there is no movement on the town's committee. Nobody has been appointed, but they are not the same. They have been selected. The group that's active right now, like, you know, they won't talk. I wouldn't. Say don't talk to them because they will champion things. Mm -hmm. It's just 
we haven't officially chosen any like there's been no official nothing official on that side doesn't mean that it won't be made of those same members i don't know <laughs> so it, it does it seems a bit it's a bit murky but they have the same direction they have the same goal all right so i as i said i had clarification and i'm now more confused <laughs> <laughs> right well i think we we leave as far as the council motion went, they were simply forwarding information about the library to this group. And so it's going to so the council's working group when the council's working group is up and running. Mm -hmm. Oh, but not the other BMRA group. Okay. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the direction. That's okay. the direction. So they'll receive information from us or the about, about us from the town. So I guess the only thing we need to be concerned about is further down the road, when we've made our presentation to council, do we also want to then make a formal presentation to that group? Um, so they're fully informed about what we see as the needs for the library in Craig Lake. I think once it's formed, then we know their mandate. Because I think that was this, John's Initial comment was they have a very narrow mandate. So you right. know, a very narrow mandate. And if you know what you know, various services is not on that mandate, then I think the, the question is, do we if there are other community groups who want to know more information, our information is available, will be available as we can see it. I'm happy to have this conversation. Right. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's um, clarified. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> but it does clear. It clears up. I think what what I hear from what you're saying is that our responsibility, as per the council meeting, is to present information to the town's um, currently mm -hmm. working committee. Yes. Period. <laughs> and that it was that the town, I believe that it wasn't even us bringing it over. It was that the information that we presented would be, would be provided. provided to them. Right. Okay. But certainly once they're up and running, a letter from the board, maybe introducing some of the materials and what we're doing might not be a bad, yeah. bad idea. It, yeah. uh, if it's yeah. a working group, that means there's going to be very few meetings. Mm -hmm. For them to actually do what they need to do and get it to council uh so i think having it be that correspondence to explain some of the information that's been presented to council might be a good way of getting that in without taking up a lot of their time on like a deputation or something yeah, yeah. yeah. okay i think uh, i think we're done on this topic mm -hmm. Okay, so then we'll move on to the empowering services and the CEO service update. I don't have anything um, really to add in. Um, I will say that it is a smaller chart because I ran out of time. I did not get to crunch all of the stats. Uh, so I will make sure that those stats that are missing are put in so that there is that annual ability to uh, to uh, compare, but all of our programming stats, I just ran out of time. Um, it has been a busy <laughs> two weeks as we've been focusing on uh, onboarding our our incoming CEO. Um, I'm not sure if you have specific questions. I think we've talked sideways through many of these pieces in other parts of the uh, the board package today, though. Any questions? Yeah. I know how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> some some days, right? <laughs> okay. Um, any other business? No. I have just if the question. It's not really a business specifically. The um recent uh, bankruptcy notice of Metro Net newspaper. And I was just listening to some uh, folks in uh, when the, no, the Kingston Herald was just saying, et cetera. Essentially, apparently that the news, when they shut down, they lost all past 
um, like they're all of their content from like whatever the years and years of, of um, newspapers that they have. Is there a central repository for, I mean, from a local newspaper perspective, does the, do all my, do you scan? You don't scan them or? Our museum holds many of the newspapers from the 1800s. Yeah. The more mm -hmm. recent ones are a bit more problematic. Yeah. Um, and it's, it is one of those cases where you say, you know, the 1960s should be in our historical records as well. The, you know, two days ago should have been in our yeah. records mm -hmm. because now things are gone. Um, but no, I, I can't say. And when it gets into the digital realm, who is holding those? Many of the newspapers at one point and offering the microfilm for sale, they went out of business. It's mm -hmm. just print media is definitely struggling. Um, we're still trying to figure out who to contact in in the ability to advertise like we're doing a press release. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we know our, our local um, newsletter, um, the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the review, we still have access with that, but many of the other newspapers that we would have put a press release in on Friday afternoon, tomorrow afternoon that we intended to send, many of those emails are no longer. Right. Yeah, so now we have to and reinvent policy. And I, I know that exist. the Toronto company that is sort of the conglomerate that's supposed to hold much of this, they're they're not responsive at this point. Right. I think they're no idea, so. I think they're overwhelmed and not trying to answer questions like and what community are you from and where is this? Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> you're in the north. <laughs> in the north. Yeah. So yes, I, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen with that, but I don't know what our local situation is. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so opportunity for round table, general updates. Looks like most of what? We have a really good program and I encourage everybody to um, come out on September 30th. Um, it is part of our Truth and Reconciliation programming. Certainly if you have an orange shirt, it's orange shirt day as well, wear your orange shirt. Um, so that is our Inuit culture uh, program. Certainly encourage you to come, registration is required. Also, the board is always encouraged to participate in all of our gallery openings. It's really yes. nice to come and, you know, be part of that, to meet the ACC members that make that happen, meet the artists, but our community comes out for these. So it's a really good way for our board members to have a different side of meeting community members because they're there for art. There's, you know, just a... a Different, different vibe. Yeah, it's a different vibe. It's, you know, have a glass of wine and enjoy the art and meet the artists and just. And I, I guess I, maybe I just missed it, the, the announcement and just to remind your board members because I did come to the BBO one. I was so disappointed. There was hardly anybody here. And I thought, oh, I spoke to the people at BBO and they also were very disappointed that their board didn't come that fall, but they're volunteers. I spoke to two or three volunteers. They said, we didn't know anything about it. They didn't advertise it within for that. And I just felt bad. I mean, I, I came by coincidence. So I made a point of coming in and talking to people because there was nobody here. And I felt so bad when I realized. It was an opportunity missed because it, it was the was. 40th anniversary. And then yeah, it was. And they had the opportunity to tell people about BVO from yeah. a totally different perspective. Yeah, it was. And I'm glad I just happened. They definitely that. made some money, though. Oh, that good. is the main piece of their program is to collect up their art. And every two years, they have an opportunity to hang here in the gallery. and. Yeah. We tend to sell the majority of it. Yeah, and they did. And they sold, yeah. 
people were going around, oh, I know this one, I know that one. <laughs> and they, that, that I always people, wonder if people buy back their art sometimes. Well, I think <laughs> some, I think yeah. some of that was. Oh, I let this go three years ago, and I've been so disappointed all the way. All the time. <laughs> there it is. Buy it back. <laughs> yeah, like that door. You might have that door. No, no. <laughs> Habitat for Humanity has my door now. I'm not going back for it. Beautiful, hand-cut 1800s door if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it's our, our board member's responsibility to just so I knew, so we know what's happening here. Mm. But I think it would have been a really good opportunity for us all to be there. You mean the, the strategic planning? Pardon? Pardon? The strategic planning? The no, the, 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 the opening the opening, opening of their of, gallery show. And they have all these different gallery openings. Mm -hmm. And it's just that almost like it'd be nice, but ticked up for board members. It's happening, you know, because I just felt so bad for them. That, day. that is something, though, that... Speaking of uh, BVO doing their strategic planning consultation, I did participate in the one here uh, on behalf of the library. And I believe one of our staff uh, participated or is participating in the virtual. I'm oh. not sure if it's happened yet, uh, but Ashley will be participating as well and uh, taking care of sort of the program thoughts mm -hmm. behind that. So we've been active in working with the the BVO consultant. Yeah, I uh, I was here for the morning session last mm -hmm. week, and uh, it was in the yep. gallery, but there was only about seven people, so it was unfortunate. It was like I love the gallery, don't get me wrong, but it would have been better in this boardroom because the room's so big and echoey, mm -hmm. and we had other people people talking like sidebars, and it yeah. Was, yeah, it was a bit I think we had four in ours. I'm not sure what the virtual will bring. Um, next item is the key messages. And I don't think we had a draft that came We out. don't. That's okay. Just um, <laughs> I will hold off on publishing the key messages until we have everything settled on the other CEO's end. Uh, so they'll probably come out on Monday or Tuesday. As soon as I see that posting <laughs> publicly on uh, the library job board, then I know that we can have our piece and then we'll have the full uh, the full press release piece will also make it into the key messages then. Are there any other key messages that you would like to address that we've spoken about today? We can put in the annual policy review just as a, I know everybody waits with bated breath to know if we have done our annual policy review. <laughs> uh, I do wonder, should we maybe just make this announcement exclusively, the CEO announcement? Certainly. I think that would be a good idea. Okay. So we have a key message. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Sounds good. Okay. So again, as soon as I see the posting up or hear from her that the board has made their public announcements, then I will I will get that out. Uh, press release is ready to go. Perfect. Thank you. The other thing I just want to say about that is I've been reading your um, stuff about the 21st century library and how libraries, the aren't your grandmother's library. <laughs> um, I think they're excellent. They're really good. And Thank I wouldn't you. mind seeing those show up actually in the key messages. Um, the articles that we've done? Yeah. But you're on your third, you've done three? You've done three. I can be nice to have them as a compendium someplace. Yes. So they're all together. And then when we get a question like, well, we don't need Google, or we don't need libraries, we need Google. Right? Uh, yeah. yeah, it's easy to do. Yeah. 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 That, that was our That's a good idea. That was one of our previous ones, yes. Mm -hmm. Any other topics that you think that you've heard somebody say? All the topics are things that I'm trying to think of people have said to me. So, you know, one was we don't need libraries anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, we have ebooks. So that was one. Um, we talked about our um, e-resources and how you can find things and making sure again, like we spoke about our our um, our statement that it's about 
not just knowing that something is out there, but knowing that it's vetted, knowing that there's an authority behind right. it. Um, we had the piece about um, the, the Google search. We don't need oh. librarians because everybody has Google at their, their fingertips and the difference between what you may want to use that for versus a what you should use it. For. Yes. The library is the third space, is the third space. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, concept and its advantages what it, in terms of social co cohesion and so maybe we'll look at that one as a libraries are just books and talk about the third space and mm -hmm. and what that means to be your community living room your community hub your third space How about um, technology connection uh, in terms of acquired knowledge, but actually just physically being able to mm -hmm. use a computer, um, have access to a computer if you don't have one, um, internet access. Okay. Those are two more that popped my mind. Certainly. And if you think of any points yeah, that you've heard, heard. Twice now I've heard people talk about coming in for the uh, uh, digital help or the technology help. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, you know, that, that is significant. It's very significant. Because it, and and it's actually with someone who is 25 and and uh, some older than man. Um, but it was really just because things like new devices are, you know, you think you figured it out, but there's always mm -hmm. that change. Oh. The only thing certain science has changed. They say that. That's right. Yes, but I don't know how it works. We, we have <laughs> our Wired Wednesday program, which then was every other week was Tech Help. Uh, we're now tech help several times a week, and we can't keep Ashley. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> poor woman works 35 hours a week here, and, you know, we'd love to get her on the desk again, but it's just she is constantly now with tech help and tech teaching and doing and that, so. and yeah. it could be three people and we would still be booked. The amount of people yeah. that are looking for that type of support yeah, I mean, and like, not that she has time to write about it but just if there is you know con common um the common questions mm -hmm. right the frequently asked mm -hmm. that's you know again she doesn't have it i don't know but and most of those she's, she's done is nice to know right that i know she's been asking this question, question. that's right that she's done here. those she, that's question. how she creates her wired wednesdays yeah or based on what she's hearing and we tied that in when we were talking about fake news last time on the last article that she she helped with the writing on that one because there was key wired wednesday topics that she had had that I said, no point in me explaining them. Let's put the links in. You've already That's done great them. Idea. And maybe an article about opening, help it, trying to help open people's minds to try different formats. Because you hear people saying, oh, oh I like my book. I want to have my book in my hand. And you have some people who like to do, like if you're, if you have ADHD or if you have a long commute, you like to listen to books. Mm -hmm. I personally like all three. And they, you know, different. While I was painting, I should have fed in the backyard listening yeah. to. You could listen on yeah. Libby. I was listening to Cloud Cuckoo, you know, that one. <laughs> uh, who's, what's this? Anyway, I was listening to a <laughs> lot. Um, and I, you know, the odd times I get a digital one and I like paper, I like to hold it. But Some people are very set in it. Um, so to open up your mind to the advantages of using to find the others is a good idea. I always took large print when I would travel. Mm -hmm. Cars kind of given that a little bit of a, and you're trying to read that book on mm -hmm. the fine print and large print was great. Yeah. Um, library's role in DEI. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. And I think the library of things is really interesting. One because it's taught you know, talking about getting past just being books. Mm -hmm. it, there's all these different things it ties into tourism. You know, you you need to borrow some snowshoes for your guests that are coming out. Know, right? Right? So you get things. your Ontario pass. Ontario pass, pass. Right. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to see in pass. It's already free. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the unusual things that uh, open other doors, not mm -hmm. just open door. And our door mm -hmm. is open for everybody. That should be so that in itself, that's the other thing talking about. I mean, I don't have 
groups that I talk to, but just individual as I've been pulling the numbers together, sharing how many people. So the, like no one goes to the library might be a headline. It's like, well, no, actually. <laughs> so oh, that's <laughs> what is it the library in, in terms of the numbers? Because that's, you know, well, my husband, but other people, it's like, what? <laughs> Seriously, that many? Years? Because we only think about our own individual experience. And mm -hmm. in the course of a month, you know, there's mm -hmm. there's a lot of people coming in through these. And I, I, that's, that's reassuring as well. As so Sean said, fun. trying to have a meeting here with the the back and forth it's hard there's so much it's traffic good. yeah it's a great thing yeah. Yeah. that's good yeah yeah okay. i think the biggest feedback would be from you know the students the kids come here right because it's like it's a lot of it's a big place right yeah. they know they can come here or if they were in trouble they find somebody to talk to here right like yeah. that's what the library is for mm -hmm. right that is if that's serving the largest need i think than anything else yeah right because when people when people ask me, yeah, what does a library do? I have Google. I'm like Google <laughs> can't, you know, no. do this, this, this. Yeah. yeah, they will tell you who won the World Series in you know 1952, but that's that's about all that Google should be used for. <laughs> all right, thank you. Um, so I like. Um, Movement seconder that the board approved the release of the key messages update for September 2023. Mm -hmm. Joanne, thank you. I saw Sean, thank you. Um, any other discussion? All in favor? Great, that is passed. Um, notice of our next meeting, next regular meeting is October 19 at 1 p.m. Julia will be chairing that meeting because I will be with um, in Germany, in Croatia. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we also have our committee meeting next week, um, perhaps two weeks from now, October 3rd at 3 p.m. All right. Um, so, if there's nothing else, I'll declare the meeting adjourned at 322.